everybody, this is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation and the glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. We're going to get started and I'm going to go ahead and introduce Joan Hunter. I'm so excited. She's an international apostolic healing miracles minister. She's written 19 books so far, Joan. Well, 20 is uh, already <laughs> off to be printed. Oh, uh, praise God. Print. Yep. So she has I'm very that. excited about that and 21, 22 are almost done, which is great. So she had that amazing scribe anointing. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh, all right. I screen switch. Can everybody hear me good? I can. All right. All right. The comments disappeared for me, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> All right, Joan, I'm going to just ask you to share the first time that you felt God's presence, God's glory. Well, the thing is, it's like all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you know, like say, for example, a, 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 a keyboard or something, piano. Okay. And you plug it in and then the power is there, but the keyboard really doesn't feel, whoa, the power is there. And when I got saved at the age of 12, I don't remember actually have experiencing like, whoa, the power hit me kind of a thing. It was just part of life. You know, I got saved since there, you know, there, I was only 12. So there wasn't a whole lot of sin going on to say the least, but, and it just kept me in a, in a Holy ghost lifestyle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just gradually, you know, like if you turn the power up, you don't really feel it. Or if you turn the water up to get it hotter, you don't really feel it because it's a sudden, you know, just a very slow process. Yeah. And that's kind of the way that it was with me, just a very slow process. And, you know, where it's like, is really cranked up right now. So, which is great, but don't really know. A, a, I mean, I have obviously have since felt different times of anointing, different things like that. But, but just knowing, uh, just knowing that his presence was there and that he wanted to use me, that's what's exciting. And I just love that because not everybody feels his presence the same way. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, yes, that's true. Number one. Number two, the word says we walk by faith, not by feeling. And if you're looking for a feeling every time you pray for somebody, because a lot of people do and they go, oh, I can't pray for anybody until my hands are warm. It's like, oh, I feel the anointing rising. This is called friction. It has nothing to do with the anointing. But if your hands have to be hot, then do it together, whatever it takes to get it going. You know, like, well, I don't really feel the anointing to go pray for somebody. 99, maybe 95% of the time when I pray for somebody, I don't really feel the anointing. I know I walk in that anointing. And, you know, like I was at, uh, I went and got a checkup this week. And they, you know, I walked in and it's like, you know, I'm not like, I don't necessarily walk in as Joan Hunter, so to speak. But somebody there needed prayer. So they got prayer and they got healed. So that was cool, you know. And, uh, you know, just wherever I go, that's what it's about. It's about, you know, taking his power, taking him everywhere I go and not just to church, you know, and everywhere I need to go. So, which is pretty cool. And I, I just love that about you because you take the kingdom with you. I do. Everywhere and you so go. so do you because I've Amen. trained how to do all that. Amen. Yes. And that's what I love to um, encourage believers, you know, as we pray on this broadcast and we start talking more about healings and miracles, what we're doing on the broadcast, like I love that you're so real. That's one of the things you just bring home. You can go to the grocery store and you can do this. (laughs) Yeah. Like the last weekend, uh, like a week ago, Sunday, I'm sitting in this restaurant. I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. 
probably never saw him, but it was just like yeah. God highlighted this guy. I and so we that. go over there and we start talking to him. Well, he's an associate at one of the churches down there in Florida who needed a healing. He couldn't raise his arm. So I prayed right there in the thing in the restaurant and he got totally healed. And then his other associate had a problem and, she, and he got healed. And I said, there's somebody here that has a problem with their knee. Who has a problem with their knee? And it turned out to be that other second one's wife. And she was scheduled for a knee replacement. And she got it right there in, in the restaurant. It was so cool. So that was very fun. I love that. And people don't think about every time there's a healing, there's a miracle. That is the glory of God. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, I just really felt the power of God come on me. No, I, it, it's just kind of like with a keyboard, it's always there. And it doesn't like a keyboard and go, whoa, I feel it. No, it's it's in there. And, and it's just with electricity and it just flows, come on, you know, no glitches and no like, wow, you know, hikes and different things like that. It's just in you. And when you get this revelation that this is actually in you and it can flow through you, with, you know, with grace, power, anointing, revelation, you know, and it was like, how did this lady know that I had a knee problem? And she was like way over there. It was a big table, you know, and she was like way over there. I said, somebody at this table got a serious knee problem. And she just popped up and God gave her a new knee. So that was pretty cool. Amen. It's that simple, right? It is. <laughs> That's what I love about your ministry. You just make it simple. And I do, you know, and it's like healing, you know, theology and man has made healing hard. Whereas we need to get the revelation that Jesus laid hands on the sick and they recovered. You know, we don't have to have a, you know, a three day prayer and not even sometimes even a three minute prayer. But it's like, you know, people get healed of fibromyalgia. They may have had it for 35 years, but literally within three to four minutes, they're completely healed. And, uh, you know, minor prayers are a little bit longer than Jesus was because he had, you know, he didn't have to add in Jesus name. We do. So, which we get to, I should say. And, uh, but we did, you know, like <clears throat> we were praying for people and people are getting healed and they're just like, this can't be this easy. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that says healing's hard. Come on. Everything okay. is, he laid hands on the sick and they recovered. You know, he spoke at the word and they recovered. I speak the word of healing to a, spoke, spoke a new shoulder, you know, and I was like, I can't raise my arm. What's going on here? Wow. You know, totally raised her arm. And, and it's so cool. So. I just love that. And I know you love media as well as I do. Yes. There's no time and distance, right? In this. I love it. I love it. I love webinars and got a television program that goes around the world called miracles happen. We just see miracles happen all the time on there. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> I know um, once you had that initial feeling of, of faith and started stepping out and healing, I just want to share with the broadcasts that, that the people are watching that as you grew in the, in the gifts of healing and the authority of healing, what are some of the things you did? Well, the, my first experience, I was traveling with my parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, also known as Happy Hunters. Mm -hmm. And so I remember this, I think it was in North Carolina, which I think is kind of ironic. And, uh, and so they used to have a lot of meetings at high school auditoriums. So you have all these chairs, you know, and everything set up and then you have a big stage, so to speak, you know, for the big productions. So at that point, there were so many people that wanted prayer. Mom just lined them all up and she goes, here, you take this one row. And I'm like, what <laughs> you want me to take this whole, I mean, cause it's a big stage. Okay. You want me to take this whole entire row? And I'm like 21 years old or something, you know, and hadn't really I'd only been traveling with her just literally a few months. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, thank you, Jesus. So I pray for the first one, first person went down. Then I pray for the next one. They've got sign of spirit, different things like that. So about five or seven down, all of a sudden the first one's screaming. They're all screaming. I'm like, are you okay? Did you get hurt? Or, you know, I didn't know what's going on. And she says, I was blind, but now I can see. I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> you know, and it's like, really? Are you now? I, now it doesn't bother me. I mean, now I, I'm not so shocked. But um, a few months ago in South Carolina, since we're in the Carolinas here, this lady came forward. I had a word of knowledge. So I prayed over here. This lady got healed, had the same word of knowledge for her, this one. So I turned over here, prayed for her, did not see her getting up on the platform. So as I'm praying for her. Um, she said, and she get her, her shoulder and got healed. 
And then I said, so we were going to help her down. So at that point she says, um, can you pray for my blindness? I'm like, okay, had no clue. Didn't see her getting helped up. You've heard the story and it's such a fun story. And, uh, and I said, sure. So what's wrong? So show me, she's lost her sight. I said, okay. So I cursed the blindness, granted a sight to be restored. Nothing happened again. Nothing happened. I said, let me see your sheet of paper. For those of you that have not been to a service, I ask people to fill out a sheet of paper with their, at least their name and whatever else they want to add, then list on the back the things that they want to be healed of. And so, and trust me, a list is amazing. And sometimes people have three things and sometimes they may have 150 things, like three columns and little tiny handwriting, which <laughs> could be a little overwhelming. So I looked at her list and I said, whoa, I mean, I can't even repeat what was on her list. It was so absolutely horrific. And I said, have you ever just said, I've seen enough? I don't want to see anymore. She goes, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so I said, that's what's caused your blindness. Life and death is in the power of the words. She confessed out of her mouth. She didn't want to see anymore. So at that point, I had to renounce the words. And she looked at me. She goes, I can see your face. I'm like, oh, that's like so awesome. And so when the ladies that, that helped her down, she has a miracles happen shirt on because that's what our, our ministry t-shirts are. So her miracles happen. First word she had read in years was miracles happen. She goes, miracles <laughs> happen. So she goes back to her seat, tries to find a Bible because like I carry, you know, my, I, I have sometimes carry a Bible with me, but most of the time my Bible's in my phone just because of you know, just accessibility of all the languages or translations instead of just the, you know, the primary passion translation that I use. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm doing this and I'm like, okay, you know, so she was gone the rest of the night. She found a Bible. She was reading because she hadn't been able to read the word in a while. And that number one, it's awesome. God healed her eyesight. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two is that it's a great teaching on the power of your words. And you can say, I've just seen enough. I don't want to see anymore. And then you wonder why you're blind. Well, you've been confessing it. And I'm, I'm dealing with a situation now where um, this, and I'll make it as anonymous as possible here, uh, the, but I have quite a few stories of this. <laughs> a parent died. Oh, and, uh, and that person made a statement years ago. I, I, I know I can't live without my dad. I know I can't live without my dad. And so dad is now gone and he is totally completely freaking out. It's like, I, and he doesn't know what's going on. Well, the vow of death that he made regarding his dad. Now it's daughters with their moms, daughters with their dads, sons with their dads and husbands and wives. Cause you see people that die and the spouse and then this other spouse dies very quickly. And it's because they made a statement. I don't want to live without you. Wow. And, uh, and so, um, so we were in the process of having that, the one I'm talking about now, having renounced those words mm -hmm. and cut them off that he's decided he does want to live and not die. And it's very, very important what comes out of our mouths and, uh, the, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You give an offering and so, well, you know, there it goes that giving it never works. You've cursed your offering. You've cursed your finances. And so we always tell everybody to go say, go and grow, go and grow. And, uh, and they watch their finances grow, which is like really awesome. I love that. And you have a decree book, right? Um, yes. I have two actually, uh, you know, but uh, prayers and promises for financial freedom, where you can declare and decree. And then I have another one is daily declarations. Um, this is 365 declarations that you can just speak, declare, decree, etc., and uh, and see, you know, see what's what you're declaring and decreeing happening. I also have another book called You Can Prophesy, and that God's called all of us to prophesy. Well, start prophesying over yourself. Well, that's really weird. No, it's not. I look in the mirror. And I say, today, God's going to meet your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, according to Philippians 419. And then today, God's going to use you as an example of his incredible wealth, of his favor and kindness and all he's done for you through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You start prophesying Ephesians 2 verse 7 over you. You're going to walk in the favor of God. I'm sitting in my living room right now, literally experiencing the favor of God that God has blessed me with this home the end of March. And it's, 
it, there's no way I could have ever gotten it. I mean, no way. Year 2000, I lost everything in the divorce and the whole bit had to start my life over literally with nothing. Well, I did get breast cancer. So starting my life over with breast cancer, lost the church, lost the marriage, lost the relationship with the girls, um, you know, and God's restored all of the above, like literally all of the above. And, uh, and this is, I call this my restoration or restitution house. And uh, which is like really awesome what God is, has done, how he's blessed me with this amazing house. And mm -hmm. I can turn this way and got a nice looking set back here. I can turn that way. I got a fireplace behind me. And so I do a lot of, uh, a lot of my recordings actually in my house, different rooms. So it works out really good. You have such a powerful testimony. What would you say to somebody right now that maybe some of the circumstances that you're describing that they're actually walking through at this very moment? Well, I'm going to, the main word I'm going to tell you is hope. And okay. it's so important that you have hope and people come in and they're like, their heads are down their you know, their shoulders are up and they're, they're just like so depressed and they walk up to me and it's like, whoosh, hope. And you can see this gusher of hope go on them. It's so awesome. And I said, you just got hope. And they go, yes, I do. <laughs> First time in years. And it was like oppression lifted, depression lifted. And then they got healed. It was just really awesome. And, uh, and the thing is, I want to encourage you is some many of you that are watching are actually hopeless. And, and especially, you know, and I know this will air later, but right now as we're actually going into the Christmas season and the new year, this is normally a very, very hard time for many people yeah. uh, being alone, different things like that. And, uh, you know, and it's just a, it's a really hard time. People feel hopeless. I'll never have a, uh, never get married. I'll never have a family. I'll never, I'll never, you know, find somebody to even spend the holidays with all that kind of stuff. And let me just tell you, the word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I, I know it's not the same, but there was many times I felt so alone in the year 2000. I didn't know how I was going to make it. And all of a sudden it was like somebody walked in my office, put their hand on my shoulder, but the door to my office never opened. And as I spun my chair around in my office, I'm like, there's nobody in here but me. And it was just reassuring. I said, I'd never leave you or forsake you. Hmm. And I'm like, I know, I know. But sometimes you need to be reminded of that. And I want to remind everybody that's watching that he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Okay. He may not do everything the way we wanted him to do, but he did, he did heal it. And I was diagnosed with broken heart syndrome. Once again, breast cancer. I believe that breast cancer is brought on because of worry, worry about the family. The breasts represent the family unit. And uh, there's just been a lot of opportunities where that's concerned. And um, I mean, I've not asked a person that had breast cancer that did not respond. I said, have you been worrying about your family and finances and children? They said, absolutely. Wow. And so we take care of that. Then we pray for the breast cancer. And then I went after God um, to heal my heart because I said, I can live without a breast, but I can't live with a broken heart. And God supernaturally touched my heart. He healed my heart. I was, I remember, in, you know, just standing under the shower and just getting, you know, just hit and hit and hit with, with the water. It's the washing of the water of the word. And as I was being hit with the natural water, I was also adding to it the word of God. And it's like, you know, he said, never leave me nor forsake me. He said he came to touch the brokenhearted and father, my heart is broken. And that's that to that. So anyway, long story short, where all that's concerned is that God totally healed mm -hmm. my heart and over a period of a few months. And then a few months after that, I, I got a little bit more healing, a little bit more healing as I got the revelation mm -hmm. and all the revelation. What I did is I compiled it and I've got it in books, which is great. And uh, so I went, I thought I need to go back to the oncologist and see what she has to say. And uh, so I go in there and they, you know, gallon of goop and they're looking left, right, up, down. Where did it go? And they couldn't find the cancer. Mm -hmm. And I learned as a result of that, how to starve your sicknesses to death. Because this is very important that we not feed them with our words. Like, I don't ever want to see anything like this again. Okay, you're feeding the blindness. And it's very important. Uh, uh, I think about eight years ago, I was diagnosed with macular degeneration. And they said, you'll be blind within five years. Well, now it's, it's eight or 10 years. I forget how long ago it was. 
And so it was, actually it was more than 10 years ago. So I would, I walked out of the office and I said, I cut those words off in GSA. I don't have macular degeneration. I have macular regeneration Amen. in Jesus name. And I'm putting my hands and I, I did that for quite a bit. And so earlier this year, I went back to, to do, to see the eye doctor and, uh, and they're going, we have it down that you have macular degeneration, but you don't have macular degeneration. But our records show that you do. And I'm like, hallelujah. I've got macular regeneration. Glory to God. And so God healed me completely of breast cancer. And he healed me of macular degeneration and quite a few other things. You know, I used to have a very large goiter. I don't have a goiter anymore. God healed my thyroid. So life is good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and the power of your tongue. I just love that. Mm -hmm. You're a living testimony of what I you am what you teach, what you speak, and um, even your, your teaching on trauma. Would you like to talk about that at all? Just, it's so powerful. Sure. I love talking about trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I love because God's given me a key, which I'm sharing with everybody watching. Whenever you watch this program, you're going to get this key. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's like you have a shoulder problem that you hurt 10 years ago. You've had prayer. It's much better than it was but it's not a hundred percent healed. Well, number one, you fell on it. Some of you fell on ice. There's a lot of ice going around right now, but you fell on it. You heard it. It was traumatized. And you also have through the years, sell your memory. So what you do is you name it, Jesus. I curse the spirit of trauma, command it to be gone in Jesus name. And I command all pain to go and cellular memory of the pain to go in any kind of frozen in the arm. I command it all to go. Thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, whoo, and it doesn't hurt. And uh, Sunday, it was kind of interesting. I felt really bad at the beginning. And, uh, and so this guy, part of my team was there. This church, the pastor said, God told me we're going to have healings at church today. And then I, I show up at her church Sunday morning. And she goes, we are going to have healings here. So she asked us to pray. And I had four, me and three others that, that helped with the praying. And so this one lady was praying. She had a, this man had a stroke, got him up, started walking him around. But his hand was still like clenched like that. Okay. And, uh, and I said, okay, so here we go. Say, thank you, Jesus. And so I started to raise his hand. I said, we're going to do Holy Ghost therapy. And so I start to go like that. He goes, ow. And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, because on a stroke, it won't hurt. But he fell because of the stroke and he broke his clavicle and another bone below it, like his the, the blade there, you know, shoulder blade. And uh, and I'm like, well, that can't stay. So then I'm like that. I put my hand on where the collarbone was, prayed for that. And then I prayed for the, the blade, the you know, shoulder blade, and it got healed. And I said, now let's try this again and say, thank you, Jesus. He goes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus and his hand was still like this but I said just go thank you and he got it all the way up with no pain because those broken bones got healed and and see when you understand you can operate I'm going to say as Jesus because it's Jesus in us healing through us it's not me healing it's him and uh you know and as you and you can operate as him I, I and and don't misunderstand me go she thinks she's Jesus no I don't think I know I'm not Jesus but Jesus is in here, he's equipped me with two hands, a mind that function very well together. Now, some of you may go, well, I'm not into that cursing stuff. Okay, well, Jesus cursed the fig tree. And a lot of people think that he cursed the fig tree because it wasn't bearing any fruit, which it wasn't. But he also said, but it's not his time to bear fruit. So at that point, they in turn, um, and they said, you know, and, but it never explains why he cursed the fig tree. He cursed it. It was dead within 24 hours. Now from that, I curse the disease and the disease has to be gone within 24 hours. Okay. So um, anyway, but the reason this is like so cool. The reason he cursed the fig tree is because when Adam and Eve sinned, the fig leaf off the fig tree was used to cover their sin, so to speak. OK, and so in the process of covering their sin, Jesus says, I'm the only one that can cover sin from this day forth. Thus, he cursed the tree that was used for covering of sin, which makes it a really, really neat story where that's concerned. 
they're really, really big. Most of them are very, very big and they're kind of furry. They feel like material. It's, it's pretty cool. They're bigger over in Israel, by the way. And, uh, but, you know, and Jesus just cursed those. The curse of fig tree as an example that we have the power to curse sin, death, darkness, etc. And And when you understand that, so we curse the spirit of trauma. We curse the spirit of fear. And, and some of you, are, I want you to just be receiving this. Curse the spirit of fear, rejection, abandonment, betrayal, and any and all forms of this trauma that has come into your life. Some of you have been so verbally abused. Like this one lady, she was the lady that, that didn't see who got her eyesight back. She was so verbally abused, physically abused, sexually abused. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the rest I'm not, I can't even say it was just horrible, horrible what had happened to her. And the thing is, all of that trauma has been completely cursed and gone out of her life. So much so that she had her eyesight restored. And what's really neat is that I have kind of a pair teaching here and it's close the door to stress and trauma, which is about stress, trauma, getting rid of all that. And then the second part is erase the pain of your past where God goes in and he wipes out the trauma. And my, my next book that I'm actually hope to finish here in the next two weeks is miracles for veterans and uh, you know, and, and veterans need healing. And, and, and God's given me incredible insight to minister to veterans, which number one is really, really awesome. And, but, but the trauma is horrible. So I have this guy, he was just on my television program uh, in November and his name is Sammy. You met Sammy and cowboy hat at the door, you know, Sammy, yeah. you remember him. Yep. And, uh, and so he was in Vietnam and 50 years ago was Vietnam roughly. Okay. So when he got married 40 some years ago, his wife, Kelly, who runs our sound, had to put a barrier of pillows between them to save her life. Because at night, he would have night terrors as if he was still in Vietnam. Wow. And so she didn't want to sleep in the other room, but she also didn't want to get killed. And so through prayer and everything like that, and uh, we have a veterans blanket miracles happen for veterans. She got one and took it home, covered him up first night, no night terrors. Amen. Second night pillows gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and all of the images that he had seen are gone and things regarding like my ex-husband, all the bad. I know that he's still in that lifestyle, but mm-hmm. all the other stuff, is totally wiped away, totally wiped away. <laughs> and, and this is so cool because God wants to do that, you know, because it's like, you know, every time I, I go to bed, this, the night terrors come, nightmares, different things like that, you know. And first of all, I would say examine where it came from. If you watch, you know, horror flick, you've opened the door for that. And, and I've learned what opens a door for sickness, which number one is sin. And number two, disobedience, which is also sin. And so forth and so on. And so examine yourself. I call it self-examination, not self-condemnation. Could be generational curse, could be just a variety of things. So take a look on the inside, make sure everything's good there. If you've got any trauma, unforgiveness, you know, get some prayer. You can call, uh, go to joanhunter.org and and send a prayer email in, or you can call our office uh, during work hours. And, and we're, you know, we're here for you. We want to, want to see you healed and whole. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just am so excited. The Lord just really put you on my heart for this broadcast. I knew I I shared a little bit with Rebecca, but um, you've had breakthrough also with miracles in the brain. And I know one of the things that I just want to um, share with the, the, the people on the broadcast is that my brother has been listening to glory stories and he needs to create a miracle in the brain. He had a traumatic brain injury where he was shaken when he was a young child, baby, an infant. And it's a little bit of it is in my book, Gateway to My Miracle. And um, I don't believe my brother's a victim because Joan is a living testimony of the goodness of Jesus Christ and the restoration of Jesus Christ. And I've actually had an open vision of my brother being restored in his brain. And so I'm going to let Joan just kind of share some of the brain testimonies and miracles that she has seen over the years. 
Well, I've seen a few of autistic children heal mm -hmm. and Asperger's, things like that. And um, my husband, Kelly, I remarried 15 years ago to a different man. He likes me to specify that. And, um, and he has a son that has Asperger's. He's also born with blind in one eye. And they said he wouldn't live past here. He wouldn't be past, you know, maximum a third grade level mentally and everything like that. And he has his associate's degree. He's working at the veterans hospital, has a full-time job, you know, and things like that. And uh, I mean, totally functional. He's, he's got a personality. He's funny. He's touchy, lovey, and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, what I've seen in the last 15 years, he's somewhere mid-20s now. But in the last 15 years, he has totally come out of his shell, which is like amazing and awesome. And see, the thing is, it's like, well, I know God doesn't heal this. You know God doesn't heal that? Prove it in the word where he doesn't heal something. Whereas God says, I have come to heal and heal the brokenhearted, heal you of everything that is wrong with you. And, you know, and he's not going to leave anything out. He took stripes on his back, 39 stripes specifically that, um, and each one symbolizes a root of disease and uh, the, that all diseases come from one of those 39 roots. And so he, he covered it all, you know, he died on the cross so we could live. And, uh, you know, and, and yes, he died physically of a broken heart. He died to carry our sins. But the purpose was just like everything opposite. OK, is that he died so that we could live. There's another covenant in there and that he became poor so we could be rich. And the, the covenant there, if you read the scripture correctly, he was rich and gave it up, left it with his mother to make sure that his mother was taken well care of. And he left to become poor as a complete sacrifice. Son of man doesn't even know where to lay his head. He gave up a home, a bed and, and food and mama cooking every night and probably breakfast too. Gave that up just for you, for you to have financial freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that uh, a lot of times people say in the word, like where do, do, does Show me in the word where Jesus healed the lunatic. And I said, what's well, in Matthew 17, chapter 14. There is hope for people that have had, you've had great breakthrough in schizophrenia, ADHD, strokes. Um, share some of your testimonies where you've uh, seen breakthrough. Yeah. In the area. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you two. One is a set of twins and then one is a man. And I'm not, I'm going to tell what happened. I'm not making fun of this man. You need to understand. I'm not making fun of this man. After the service, he comes up to me and goes, I need you to pray for me. I said, okay, what do you need Jesus to do? I have schizophrenia. And I said, okay, let's pray. So I prayed trauma in the heart, trauma in the brain, remove the label of schizophrenia in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. He goes, that was awesome. Totally, completely normal. You know, and I mean, and I mean, and I'm just like, oh, that is awesome. But that's awesome. <laughs> Me saying that, too, you know, because he was instantly healed. His family was there and they're like. What was, what was that? You know, totally completely healed. And then um, about, gosh, probably 10 years ago, uh, my friend Angie, she brought I had not met her at this point. It's kind of a neat story. One of my ordainees ran into her at the grocery store. And she was leaning over the cart because she couldn't stand up because she had arthritis all over her body. About 45 years old, which is, that's way too young. Yeah. I'm too young to have, you know, that. And I'm, I'm way past 45. And uh, so my friend saw her, prayed for her. She was instantly healed right there in the grocery store. Well, as a result of that, she has now come to get ordained. But she came over and, um, and this is before she got ordained. It's like my first time meeting her. She brought her twins. They were born prematurely, a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. and their brain did not develop and they were in special ed classes. Mm -hmm. So this is between Christmas and new year's during that general while they're on their break. So I prayed for the trauma to go and for God to give them, I said, the name of Jesus, I just pray father the name of Jesus, you give them a new brain. So they go back to school in January and they're going, you're really doing good. What happened? They said, miss Joan prayed for me to get a new brain. <laughs> okay. They were like in fifth, sixth grade. Okay. So that at that point, 
They graduated from high school two years early, started college as a junior, and they graduate next year. Wow. So they, they skipped four years because they were able to learn so quickly. So don't limit God that God can't do that because God loves doing that. Amen. And, uh, and it was, it's so cool because I'm so proud of it. It's almost like my own kids graduating from college and, you know, and, and the, the teachers were like, what happened? Miss Joan prayed and, get, and I got a new brain <laughs> just like that, you know? And, uh, and they were just little kids, you know, now they're, he's, he's really tall and she's a little bit shorter than I am, but this, it was awesome. It was just really, really cool. Amen. That's a powerful testimony. So since we've advertised this broadcast, there's quite a few people that have messaged to see if we could pray for um, strokes and um, tumors and obviously traumatic brain injury. So anytime you want to just pray exactly what you said um, so that they just can receive. Yes. Sounds good. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you put your hand on your heart. And then I'm going to actually put my left hand on it because I'm going to point with my right hand. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing to each person watching now live or later on because it's not limited to healing just now while it's live because you are alive. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing. I curse every and all forms of trauma. In, this, in these lives, in Jesus' name, trauma from abuse, abandonment, betrayal, in Jesus' name, rejection. There's just a lot of rejection, a lot of verbal abuse and put down. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse every bit of that trauma. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, I curse depression, oppression, anxiety, fear, in Jesus' name. I speak in the name of Jesus for it to be raised up, to be supernatural, in Jesus' name. And Father, right now, as we go into the new year, Father, I thank you for removing their blinders, removing their blinders of that you don't want to heal them. And Father, you want to heal them. It is your heart's desire that you heal them in their body, in their mind, in their soul, in their spirit, and their finances. So Father, right now, all trauma to go in Jesus' name, breakthrough is happening. I curse any and all forms of tumors. We have a lady in, in the room here who I called her out. I said, I feel like there's something like in the uterus or something like that. And she had 40 tumors. She's in my book, Freedom Beyond Comprehension. And at 40 tumors, her stomach went whoosh, just like that. She had to buy pants on the way home from church because she didn't have any that fit her. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and that was eight years ago. And, uh, and so you met Tortilla. And, uh, and so eight years ago, she was totally completely healed of that. And God healed her heart and all the rejection, abandonment, abuse, you name it, all got totally healed too. And, and this is what God wants to do for you. And so I curse any and all forms of tumors in Jesus name and growth throughout the body in Jesus name, whether in uterine or, um, there's even one that is, um, a growth in a testicle like testicle testicular cancer is cursed commanded to go in Jesus name. And I, let's just go cover the cancer right now. Put your hand on wherever you might have cancer or it's been diagnosed. So in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of cancer in Jesus name. Every prion, P-R-I-O and every prion that has been associated with it. I command every bit of that to go in Jesus name it is cursed commanded to go. Any damage that the cancer has caused. I speak you to be completely restored in Jesus name. In Jesus' name, and I curse the spirit of trauma regarding fibromyalgia, spirit of trauma in Jesus' name, I command it to be gone. And Father, I curse the spirit of pain, the spirit of fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Many of you have chronic fatigue syndrome. It's time that that go in Jesus' name. And I curse any and all form of chronic fatigue syndrome in Jesus' name. And Father, I just speak complete health, wholeness, restoration in every area in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I speak sweet sleep. Many of you have nightmares and or just have insomnia that is now cursed, commanded to go. Whatever has brought that on, it has to go because the word says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. Mm -hmm. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the serotonin, melatonin levels in their body to be restored to normal, giving them sweet sleep tonight. I curse any kind of pain. I'm sensing pain in the shoulders, pain, pain in the hips, pain in the knees. And Father, in the name of Jesus, all kinds of pain, inflammation, arthritis. I command every, every bit 
of it to go in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Every bit of it has to go in Jesus name. I speak complete restoration of, of in knees, especially a uh, cartilage being restored um, tumors gone uh, in the knees, meniscus can be completely healed, reattached in GSA, any weakness in the knees to go, any soreness uh, in muscles, because a lot of times with fibromyalgia, different things like that, trauma is stored in the muscles and in tissues. So Father, I command all those stress balls and tissues that have that are hurting. I command every bit of it to go in Jesus name, every bit of that pain to go in Jesus name. And we're going to kind of switch over into, um, and I'm going to pray for brains too. So father, I thank you. You gave those twins new brains. So you're, there's brains in the atmosphere. And so father, I thank you for a release of those brains into their heads, fully functional, fully restored. And father, I thank you for showing them that they can do a whole lot more than they ever thought they could. And all the words that have been spoken over them are now cut off in Jesus name, that they're going to live and not die. And they're going to accomplish what you have put them on this earth to do in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And then we're going to come do finances. So father, because many of you need finances and, uh, and it was kind of interesting. I got a, um, a letter in the mail today. And it says, you are pre-qualified for a credit card uh, for $5,000. And you're going, whoa, I need $5,000 to spend Christmas. No, you don't. That is just a lie of the devil. Come on. And I took it, shredded it up and put it in the recycle and just said, no, I am not going to do that. And, and the enemy wants you to think that that's a $5,000 blessing. It's a $5,000 curse set from the enemy to Come tempt on. you to get into 5,000 <laughs> more dollars in debt. No, 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 no. So father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just curse the spirit of poverty in Jesus name, poverty mindset in Jesus name, stinking thinking. And father, we thank you for supernaturally raising them up financially because you became poor. So we have the access, the accessibility of heavenly finances, not just what is standard to be made. And so, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for supernatural turnaround like never before. I thank you for, for the windows of heaven opening up blessings because your word says you give seed to the sower. And, Father, we just thank you that greater doors of them being able to give are going to be opened up like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! You can just see things breaking and breaking and breaking. Praise yeah. God. It's so powerful. Um, I know I, I just, I know your heart and love is for the nation. So I, I can't get off of here without, without asking to, to share your favorite testimony. Any, any of them that God puts in your heart um, that happened in one of the nations. So you can go anywhere you want to go with that. Anywhere I want to go. Okay. We've well, been anywhere to over probably 55 countries. Okay. Outside the United States. So that's a tough, question okay <laughs> I but, know, to pick one is probably hard for you <laughs> okay so israel is an uh, is an obvious question you know obvious answer okay and th to be able to walk up to somebody and we pray in the name of yeshua and for them to get healed it's really awesome okay <laughs> and then to 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 be an example over there and then they know that we're christian and they go and that night they have a a, a dream about yeshua and they come back and they said we Yeshua is real. We want to know him. So we get to lead him to Jesus, which is like so awesome. Okay. That's, that's an obvious one. Okay. Number one, number two, which, um, is Haiti. You think Haiti, where did that come from? Well, I, I went to Haiti and have a fun testimony. <clears throat> I got a prophetic word saying, God's called you to the French. God's called you to the French. I'm going, wee wee, Patty, you know, <laughs> and then I get a call about going to Haiti. Do you want to go to Haiti? And I said, yes. And I kept shaking my head, no. And I kept saying, yes. And I'm like, who is using my voice to say yes? <laughs> anyway, I went down there and they call me the mother of Haiti now. I've been there five times praying that it gets safer to go so I can go back again. But, um, but anyway, went down there and literally saw 1.1 million people's uh -huh. lives turned around. Some dedicated their life to the Lord. Some became Christians. And they had an influx of over a hundred thousand people, new new converts coming to church as a result of that. We do have 
still sponsor um, three orphanage, four orphanages actually in Haiti right now, uh, which is really awesome. That's powerful. So what would you say to the people that, that are listening right now and they, they feel the Lord's call to go to the nations? Number one, the word says study to show yourself approved, which means study. I remember uh, this one guy, he asked me, he says, I, he fell at my feet. He says, I want your anointing. I want your anointing. I said, everything that I know that, you know, that I have, you know, I've got it published as much as I know at this point, everything I know is published. And he goes, you, I have to read a book for the anointing. Yeah. You know, mine it doesn't have to be mine. I mean, obviously start with the Bible, but you want to know more about healing than you read my books. I, I mean, I've been doing this for 46, 47 years. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And so he goes, I'll, I'll buy a book. I want the anointing. And I'm like, uh, no, you can buy a book, but unless you open it, you can have a, you can have 10 Bibles in your house, but unless you open it, it's not going to do any good, Come on. you know? And it's like, Oh, and then like they take your book, my book, and it's like, okay, I want everything in this book. And then they put it down. They ain't going to cut it. You oh. know, the anointing is on the book. And actually people have actually picked up the book and gotten healed. But they're not going to get the revelation that's on the inside. And people are looking for a quick fix. Okay. So, you know, if you want to know more about healing and the prophetic, I have lots and lots of books. Got a full healing school. As you know, we have ordination and healing school training at the uh, Tom Ball, Texas. Uh, office, which is just outside Houston. And I mean, I know that you guys life, your life is totally turned around. Just, you know, it's like what you've been doing is like on steroids now and uh, this augmentation of what you've already known. And that's, what's important is that, you know, like if I want to, if I want to know more about this, cause when I went through hell in the year 2000, I got everyone, now this will date it, but I got every one of Joyce Meyer's VHSs. I mean, a new one came out. I ordered it. I, I didn't it. have any money for food. <laughs> But I made sure that I got my spiritual food. You were hungry. And my, I was so hungry. And I did, you know, I gave at least 10% to God. And I did 10% to myself of feeding myself. And I'm not talking about like steak or potatoes. I'm talking about with the word. And as a result of feeding myself, you know, I was able to make it through. And write great books. So make a shortcut for everybody else to get through. That's powerful. And the Lord met you at your place of hunger. I love that. Absolutely. Yes. That was that was a key to the, the, I mean, it's obvious the fruit of, of what just all that sacrifice that you made that, that it's been a great the pain and the agony yeah. and the hell and abandonment, betrayal and everything. And, and to be where I am today. Amen. So you're, if you're on here and, and you haven't, you're, you're just logging into the broadcast and you haven't made Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And you're kind of wondering what me and Joan are talking about. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart, make yourself real to me. I believe you died on that cross. I just want to know you and just allow like what is saying on here, allow yourself, like she said that her testimony of overcoming breast cancer and trauma and abandonment and divorce. Um, I can just even see somebody on here right now that, um, that I just see forgiveness coming over your heart. I just see God just touching your heart right now, even as a little girl. And like what Joan said, you can even pray that that the memory cells and the subconscious just be cleared. And Joan's a living testimony that God can do that, that he does care about the memories. And you can if you see anything, Joan, you can just call it out. I, I don't see anything on the screen, but that's probably good because I don't get distracted. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But, you know, and just Father, I just thank you for healing the brokenhearted. Yes. You know, because. Um, I have a book called love again, live again, restore the heart, regain your health. And if you've got heart issues, broken heart syndrome, et cetera, different things like that, it will affect the health in your body Amen. and getting your heart healed. All of a sudden just, whoop, just shows up and it's just amazing how God will just heal your entire body when your heart's healed Amen. and you look younger too. See that good. Amen. It's powerful. I know one of the other things the Lord want me to mention, um, you said you have such a high impartation for the scribe anointing to be able to write. What would you say to the people on here that, that have a powerful testimony like you or in, they're in the process? What would you just give them advice about writing? Okay. A couple of things. I would encourage you to email the office. We can mail you some information. Amen. Uh, number one. Number two is that 
Um, there is a spirit. I, I feel a spirit of procrastination over the body of Christ. <laughs> and I'm going to advise you five years from now, don't go, I need to write that book. Amen. This is the year for you, for that to be released in the year 2020, sit down, going to, you know, take notes. And it's like, right now uh, we're working on a book and we have all the chapters done. Now we're at the point of where do they all fit? Okay. Because they got to get in the right one, two, three, four, five. And, um, and it's good because it takes stages to walk out of veteran healing. Okay. And, uh, and cause you can't, you can't, you know, just skip to the end, so to speak. And so, uh, but just make a table of contents, things that you want. And the main thing, what do you want to accomplish through writing the book? I also will tell you that uh, somebody came up to me shortly after the divorce, um, Whitaker House, and Bob Whitaker Sr., he came up to me and he says, if you ever decide to put your testimony in a book, I want it. I went, thank you very much. Went back to my room and went, <laughs> Like who's going to read my testimony, right? You know, and uh, and so I I lived the last chapter in that book, and at that point I wrote the book called Healing the Heart, and I I wrote and I shared a lot of stuff. I didn't share everything, but I shared a lot of the trauma that I had gone through, just abandoned at, at birth. You know, basically by my natural father, he was already gone. Charles Hunter was my adopted dad. He was my dad, mm-hmm. and. Um, and then you, you go through all this stuff. And, and uh, then I went, um, you know, and, and I thought, okay, so I started writing all this stuff. And then I was like, once again, who's going to read it? Well, as of right now, not including Kindle or in other languages, it has sold over 500,000 mm-hmm. copies. They say the average book is read by 12 people. Well, if it's read by 12 people, that's six million people whose hearts have been touched because I was willing to write my story. Many of you out there have a story, have a testimony. And, and I want to really encourage you that now is the time for you to get your, your story, your testimony, the revelation, whatever it might be, get it in a book because it's like, well, who's really going to read it? I really didn't think if I had sold a hundred copies, I'd have been happy. It didn't cost me anything to publish it at that point. And I'm like, if we sell a hundred, you know, the publisher's happy, but to sell that many, he's really happy. <laughs> he's really well, because happy. You were obedient, right? Yes. And it was hard. I mean, cause there's, and it was neat because I wrote a lot of the stuff in there to be honest with you. I don't remember because it's, it's not menopause. It's not old age. It's mm-hmm. that God has just totally wiped out of my, my memory, which is awesome. That's powerful. <laughs> That's true restoration right there. It is. It is. <laughs> That's so exciting. And I want to make sure I honor your time. So I'll just ask you one more question because I know it's in the busy season. And um, I know you're doing your 20-day countdown, which is awesome. That is so much fun. I love it. I love it. So I know you can't share your big reveal on your 2020 word, but could you share a little bit um, to the people that are, that are getting ready to walk into 2020, what you're hearing from the Lord as they're walking toward the end of the year? Okay, number one, don't let your past keep you from your future. Okay, so it may be a real stronghold to you of your past. How can God use me? Because, well, you look at David, you look at Moses, you look at, you know, etc. And you in turn, that, that can keep you from really walking into your future. Okay, and, and, and get the straight jacket of the can't off. Get the spirit of procrastination off of you like never before. And because the enemy doesn't want you to write that book. The enemy does not want you to walk out the call that God has on your life. The enemy, now get this, the enemy is scared of you. Amen. Don't be afraid of the devil. Amen. You, The devil is afraid of you. Get that in the right order. Okay. Amen. And when you understand that we need to get this off and, and you know, actually, I recorded the the year end at Ground Zero in New York City. Mm-hmm. And I recorded it partly in Houston, part of it in New York City. And when New York thought everything was over, literally thought everything was over with 9-11, we have Jeremiah 2-9-11. Okay, 29-11. 
okay? And, uh, and it's really cool because in the midst of Israel had lost everything, they knew they couldn't recover. And they had to move out of Israel, mm. not for seven months, but for 70 years. Mm. But God restored Israel to them. And in the midst of having lost everything, Jeremiah says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Mm. Stay tuned <laughs> for the rest of it. <laughs> That's so powerful. It is. So if they want to get in on your 2020 countdown, can you share a little bit about where they can go? joanhunter.org slash countdown and sign up. And it will also tell you how to access the 13 days previous to now. Amen. And you'll it's very to- fun. I'm getting huge response from that. Huge. Amen. I love it. I love it. And so uh, if they want to donate, if, if you got killed or you have a testimony under the replay, or if you want to donate and, and help Joan to, to continue to plow the kingdom ground because she's doing such an amazing work. I just love the veterans too, what she's doing for the veterans. It's just the heart of the father. So just tell yeah. them where they can uh, sew at Joan. Joanhunter.org and there's a donate button. It makes it really easy. Amen. All right. Well, I want to make sure I, I honor your time. So I just thank you so much, Joan, for coming well, on here. Thank you for having me. And uh, I just can't wait to, to get to see and do some stuff with you guys. Well, <laughs> week, we'll be together again. I know. Is it Mor- Moravian, right? Coming you know, up. Moravian and Raleigh and uh, Wilmington. I'll be so in Wilmington. If if you're close by to any of those areas, just go to her website yep. and if you want to see a little bit more. Yeah, events are on there and I'm all over the world. <laughs> She's everywhere. <laughs> all right. Well, well thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Be blessed. Be blessed. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God and ask Him to help you cultivate His presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.